Peter, those looked like very good results to me. Yeah. Can you elaborate on the significance of the high-grade gold samples, particularly the 25.7 grams per ton of gold? Fine. We weren't particularly surprised by this. This was a former high-grade producer from 1936 until we're not sure when, because it's on patented lands. So there's not a lot of public information. But there's a, a shaft, there's a dump, there are trenches. Uh, we bought this from Kin Ross in 2023. We went in, and this is our first sampling program. We're not surprised by the numbers, given what the historical numbers were pre-43-101. Uh, okay. The numbers mean that it confirms that this was a high-grade uh, producer, confirms that there's high-grade mineralization in the area, and it confirms there's a lot of good reason to go back. Okay, so if you just back us up for CBLT investors and or new investors going, who is this and how did they get such an amazing deal? We do understand for those of us in the business that you probably have some of the best deal flow in the industry. How did you find this project? And, and give us a little bit of uh, some background on it, please. Um, one of our directors in 2016 turned us on to a property called Copper Prince in Sudbury, Ontario. We have pulled gold and, co and cobalt out of the quartz veins on that property. So we staked another property over here. We really wanted the piece in the middle because that's where the former producing Falcon gold mine is and the Garson Fault runs through there. We've been chasing that property since 2017. Uh, it was low on Ken Ross's priority list. They finally got around to dealing with it. And because we owned these two, we were the only logical buyer to buy the middle piece. And that's how we came to own this forgotten gold producer. Okay. And, and so how do the recent sampling results from the phase one reconnaissance prospecting program compare to historical resource estimates and previous exploration outcomes at the Falcon Gold property? Historical information is spotty and everything predates 43101. So, uh, you know, that all the usual caveats apply. A gentleman named George Bailey, on behalf of Falconbridge, took some samples in 1994, and his samples exceeded ours. They ran from 30 to 54 grams per ton. Again, random samples, um, so they may not be uh, de demonstrative of the entire property, but we're not surprised by the high-grade results, and we fully expect to get more when we go back in for the next round. Okay, so, I mean, this is an obvious question, but what are your next steps here? Uh, the next step is in a week or two, our professional geologist will be back on site, more mapping, more sampling, particularly with an eye towards mapping what we're going to clear in the fall. In the fall, we'll bring in a pressure washer, clear out some trenches, clear out the dumps. You know, it's been 40 years since Falcon Bridge was in there, 30 years. So we'll clear out the trees that have grown, some of the moss, the grass, so we can get a really good look at the historical features and, of course, sample from them to get set up for a 2025 program. And so how do you plan on leveraging this uh, historical data? I mean, there must be a great deal of it. Uh, there's not, which is interesting. Some of the best data we have found have, has come from the Sudbury Star from 1936, 1938, and 1941, I believe. Uh, the Ontario government had some, but again, because it's patented lands, no one was obligated to report to the government. We have invited the Ontario government to come in and do its own sampling as part of the district geologist program, which is one of the best uses of your tax dollars you've ever seen. I'm a steady cheerleader for the district geologist program across Ontario. So we've invited them in to do their own sampling in parallel with our own. You have a number of projects at CBLT. Would you like to give the Investor News audience kind of an overview of what CBLT has and and Tell us where you're going with it next, please. We like, if possible, to find properties or minerals that are out of favor or forgotten that we can put some work into and then M&A it to another group to advance it to the next level. We've been relatively successful at doing that for our shareholders. Pro projects have been advanced, and we'd like to continue to do that uh, from British Columbia right through to a really wonderful property in Newfoundland right next to the past-producing Duck Pond Mine. Uh, which appears to be a VMS, but we're not sure. 
Well, as always, if you're out there and you have an amazing project and you want to make a deal, I recommend you call Peter Clausey from CBLT. Thank you so much for the good news or, today. Or if you want to buy an amazing project, uh, we're always happy to talk and listen. CBLT, thank you very much, Peter. It's always a pleasure. Thank you.